promised, this is Alicia and Amber from LBCC Historical Apothecary. Uh, we said today that we were going to do um, some different, different live videos for you, hedgehogs. And for those of you who don't know what hedgehogs are, um, it's not just the animal. It's an actual hairstyle that was really popular in the 1780s and 1790s. Um, we're going to show you two different ways to do that. The first is going to be, um, lovely Amber is going to show you how to do it if you don't need any hair pieces. Um, and then I'm going to show you, for those of you who do wigs, who need to do wig, um, like myself, how we would do it with the wig. So, uh, did you want to add anything as far as? Um, not as far as introductions go. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, um, we'll, we'll kind of work, we're going to let Amber kind of take it. Um, and she'll explain to you what she does for her hair because you know everybody's hair is different uh, it, it, How you go about getting your hedgehog style, you know I may not do the same thing that Amber does to get mine because my texture is different and just how I need to work with it So we really want to go over two different methods for you to kind of help you figure out which best works for you um, and so I think with that said uh, I'm going to go behind the camera and um, I'm going to be there, so ask questions. Today is school day, uh, and I'll actually show you guys before we get started, like what's going on with school day. Um, so we may have questions from behind the lines here, from our audience. Um, in our audience that may have, have been asked, we'll, we'll get those answered too. So <laughs> we will keep you guys up to date. Um, and yeah, so, so let's get started. Yeah, we're yeah. Good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Um, okay. So, as Alicia said, my name is Amber. My last name is Mendenhall, and I am from the blog Lady of the Wilderness. Um, I used to have a blog called Music Corsets in Star Wars, which you might also know me from, and I do a lot of historical costuming or and living history events. Um, so, uh, Alicia and I have known each other for a good while, and through our experiences together, we've done a lot of hairdos. And um, I've gotten really good at figuring out what works with my hair after years and years and years of practice um, and trying to figure out how on earth to get my straight hair to curl. So that's why I have all these funny little noodles or little things all over my head um, right now which take a long time to put up and I'll explain more about that a little bit later. But we will be doing the hedgehog style uh, which was really popular in about 1784, um, clear through the 1790s. And um, it's known as being a very large kind of frou-frou do. Um, it's very wide rather than tall. So an afro is going to be a really large thing that you saw in the 1970s. Whereas a hedgehog do is going to be the same texture, but it's going to come out wide. Um, and that's going to help hold up those Gainsborough hats that are very, very large and keep everything as being as big of a silhouette as you could possibly be. Um, so before we get on to doing our hair and I start talking about how I got my hair to this state, um, I wanted to show everybody kind of where we're at and what we're doing and why we're here. So right now we are at the fair at New Boston, which is in Springfield, Ohio at the George Rogers Clark Park. And um, it's school day today. So we were really fortunate to be able to do this live feed because we don't have customers coming in and out of this lovely shop. It's a very rare time that we don't have anybody here. Usually we're jam-packed. But um, anywho, so to show you kind of where we're at, you can see we've got these up so we don't have people coming inside the shop. Um, and we have our lovely audience right now, which will grow as time goes on. Um, <laughs> for school day. Now you all are from Xenia Christian schools. Very cool. Is this one of your last stops? Are you about done? We have a little bit more time. Okay. Well, if you have any questions for us, feel free to ask. It's not just the people on Facebook that are asking questions. So, um, if you, did you show them this way? So we are the one, two, three, four, five, six. We're the sixth tent on the last row um, at the corner of Eden Lane here at the fair at New Boston, which is a 1790s house, I believe. Yep. Um, which is why we're doing a 1790s do and you can see it's bustling, but it's not gonna It's not as bustling as it will be tomorrow uh, And we might do another video tomorrow. We're not sure depends on how busy we are 
but um, it's lovely weather here, which we usually don't get in Ohio. <laughs> Remember last year so, we had our stays? Last year was awful. It was just so wet. We it was humid, wet, and hot. We had our stays hung up on lines in the shop, hoping they would dry overnight. And they did and not. They did not. So we had to put wet stays on in the morning. It was not fun. No, it was it was very uncomfortable. Um. So do we have enough live? Or people watching right now to start you think yep we have nine right now and it'll continue to grow okay so yeah so I can talk a little bit about kind of what is going on with my head at the moment um, so I've got on a cotton scarf that I put up on my head fashionably so when I went to Kroger earlier today people wouldn't be um, offended by my hair because <laughs> uh, it is a little offensive I think uh, just to look at it and if I look this way I'm looking at the mirror to make sure I don't look like a goober um, but anywho so I've got this very large um, turban on and this is just to cover up all of the noodles the oodles of noodles on my oodles head of noodles. <laughs> so this is what my hair looks like I look like a Monchichi pet if you've ever seen one of those <laughs> whenever I do my hair up like this um, uh, this took two and a half hours for me to do up. Uh, to describe my hair, I have very heavy, thick, fine, slick hair, which is not great for trying to get any sort of curl. Um, it comes to about here on my back. And last year when I did this do, it was um, it was a bob. So this yeah. this is a drastically Longer. harder way of doing it. If your hair is uh, about here. As a, as a bob or a lob, a long bob, it's going to do best for this particular hairdo because the weight of your hair is not going to hold those curls down. My hair, fingers crossed that this set works, um, it, it might come down a little bit more, which means we'll have to tease it up to, to get some things going. But to further explain what's going on, so these little white things that you see all over my head are actually toilet paper. Um, as gross as that sounds, uh, I figured out um, after I would say I had about 10 years of trying to figure out how to curl my hair until I figured out this method. So I've done pin curls, I've done all sorts of wet sets, and nothing ever seemed to work. But doing these tiny little toilet paper curls actually did, and I think it's because they absorb moisture, but they're not, um, uh, what's the word? They're not porous, they're very light, so air can kind of get through them as long as your hair isn't wet to begin with. Um, so I can take down one and show you kind of what's happening. Okay. So this is the toilet paper roll. Ooh, ah. Uh, um, <laughs> Pretty much what I do is I take a, a square of toilet paper and I half it, then I roll it up long ways and twist it in half to get one of these. So one square of toilet paper will get you four of them. And I don't even know how many I have in my hair. Uh, they last for quite a long time. Um, I, the first time I used these, this, this version of them um, was last year actually. And I've used them several times. and because they're toilet paper, when they disintegrate or when they get icky, you just throw them in the toilet and they disintegrate anyway. So it's very nice. Um, and as you can see, my very long hair, which this piece is about to here. We'll get a, a close up of that one. A tiny one. Look at that beautiful curl. Um, it, that one's kind of, kind of crazy. Well, we can fix that later. We can. Um, but my hair is layered and the first layer starts about here. So this particular curl that is now only about two inches long is actually hair that's down to here. Um, so yeah, when you're using these, you use them like you would a regular um, uh, curler. You pull them down like this, which now, now it's pulled out. And then you do them like this as tightly as you can, and then put a pin in it when it's all the way up to the root. So as you can see, when you pull on it, it comes down a little, but we're gonna tease everything up and get things going. And if you guys have questions, let us know, okay? So we're gonna do two different types again for those of you just joining us. Um, we're gonna show you how to do ambers, which is um, very thick hair, but it is fine. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna show you how to do mine, and mine involves a wig. So 
Um, stay tuned and it's gonna be awesome. So, so go ahead. So yeah, um, I'm gonna start taking this down because it's gonna take a long time. And I don't know, you can- Do you want me to help you take them down? Yes, that would okay. be helpful. All right, so um, I'm gonna step back and I'm gonna help Amber get all of them out because it does take a while. Uh, and then I will double check if you guys have any questions, but we thought it's gonna be a long video But we thought this is the way to go to show you guys from beginning to end because sometimes when they speed stuff up um, You kind of lose the the little snippets of in between of, of like um, Just how to kind of perfect things and stuff like that. So um, here we go. All right So to get these up um, like I said before I rolled them in the toilet paper rolls But the other thing that I did was I had the smallest amount of Oh, wait, wait, hold on. I, I didn't tell them how to take it out. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so in order to get these curls to get very, very small, you have to pull them out from one side very quickly. And that's how you get a very tight curl that looks like this. Oh, um, so it's like papillo curls. Like when you pull the it paper. Is. It is like papillo curls. Yeah, so when you pull the paper, guys, you're pulling uh, the papillo paper. This is the same thing. But you do have to pull them out all on one side or else it'll unwind itself. And that is not good. So, so do you guys have any questions about what we're doing here? Because I'm happy to answer them. No? We have a growing audience here. So um, for those of you who don't know what happens on Fridays, uh, Thursdays or Fridays at events, a lot of times it's school days. And that means that various schools from around the area get to come and a lot of the shops or demonstrators will have activities set up that the kids can either participate in or they can um, just hang out, kind of like we do. They can hang out, they can ask questions, learn some stuff. Um, we don't actually keep the shop open for school days, uh, but we do do kind of random things of like just talking about historical apothecary and makeup and you know how does one actually make oils um, things like that so uh, our, our audience kind of comes and goes and then they ask questions and um, it's a fun time so he is right out there he's got your um, you heart check thing. And see if they have any questions? yeah so I put pomade, a little bit of water in my hair, and my favorite pomade is this one here, which is a sample, but I really like the scented orange flower. Do you guys want to smell it? You guys can smell it if you want. <laughs> it just smells so good. Feel free to pass it around. So you use that and it actually works as a leave-in conditioner if you use it by itself and even when you use it with powder, it does that because the um, fats in the pomade coat the hair follicles and make it less frizzy. Which is great. Did so, we have any questions? Do you want to? No, we're we're good. Um, did you want to talk about how they? Because you guys are so used to using like shampoo and conditioner every day in your hair, right? Mm -hmm. When you shower. Yeah. Amber, did you want to talk about how they uh, clean their hair historically? Yeah. So um, taking a full immersion bath or a shower like we do today is um, a luxury uh, at any point. You know, prior to you know the nineteen early 1900s um, the reason for this is it's a large use of all of that water so um, a lot of people most people if they weren't affluent and weren't rich they would actually just um, wash the parts that show and stink so they would wash their face wash their armpits wash their other parts their feet maybe um, and do a sponge bath on a regular basis um, and then maybe once a week they would actually wash their hair fully but to keep it nice and clean and from getting um, oily like our hair does anymore I, I talked to lots and lots of people that say well I have all of this oily buildup that just happens all of a sudden um, it's actually because you're washing your hair very often and too often so your your scalp is wanting to give you back those oils to coat and make your hair very um, healthy and make it not break uh, and so it's doing that faster, which makes more oil build up and make, makes your hair look greasy. But it, luckily at this point in time, you can use that natural oil in your hair to help keep the pomade and the powder, or to keep the powder to stick onto your hair. Um, and then you just add more pomade in the scent of your choosing to keep it, um, keep it nice and fluffy and it's much easier to comb out if you use the powder uh, with the pomade. 
and it acts as a modern day dry shampoo so really you don't notice that your hair is greasy or anything because you're putting the powder in it and then when you wash your hair it is a lot more um, smooth and less frizzy than it is when you use a traditional shampoo because those actually strip everything off of your hair follicles and then the new conditioners that they have have so like different kinds of silicones that coat it so it makes it feel like it's nice for a little bit and then it goes away very quickly mm -hmm. so I like using historical methods um, to bathe I do feel more clean if right before bed I take a sponge bath and then in the morning I can take another sponge bath because it doesn't use very much water and um, with hair I usually wash my hair Mm, maybe once every four days anyway and the the oil buildup has definitely slowed thank you so mm -hmm. thank you so much so all right alicia has gotten a large I'm, chunk of it I out i am working it she's <laughs> doing well um i didn't explain actually this kind of funky thing that i that, that was the cannon that was the cannon um, i'm sorry <laughs> if it scared you but um the way that a lot of 1790s do's are, it's a very large and wide um, teased and uh, kinky type of fro that you're going to have, but there's a big chunk of hair in the back as a ponytail that just kind of hangs down. Um, that's what this part here will be. Ooh. Yeah, so Amber didn't actually put in the curls in this, this part of her hair. Um, and, and we'll pomade and powder that one just like you regularly would for um, earlier 18th century styles. Right. And it, it leads it to completely volumize and make itself a lot bigger. Um, but yeah, so my hair is a bob length right now and it is actually closer to about where my bra strap is. Um, or my lower shoulder blades. And it's grown from this length to that in a year. So I am very fortunate to have a lot of um, healthy hair but it's very heavy. So and I think historical hair care has a lot to do with that though too. Um, it definitely can. Treating your hair properly and not, not overwashing it and stripping it helps your hair become a lot healthier quicker and then helps it grow too. So Yeah, the other thing that we don't do as often anymore is comb our hair or massage our scalp. Um, and that stimulation of the blood vessels in your scalp help your hair to grow anyway. So I give myself, like, in the evening, I just really lay into my scalp and give myself a good massage. And um, that might contribute to how quickly my hair grows. I don't know. Um, I could just be lucky. Uh, <laughs> There's, but... um, in like the, the um, Edwar Victorian Edwardian books on how to handle hair care, uh, massaging the scalp was very, very important. Um, and they would recommend that you do it every night. So I think, I definitely think there's something to that. Um, in our shop right now, we actually have a Regency recipe for um, making your hair thicker. And um, that requires you to massage it in the scalp. But it's a proven, it's a proven recipe that has actually been used by uh, many, many different cultures for um, strengthening the hair. Um, and you can still buy products with it in today for that purpose, but in order to make it work, you actually have to massage it into the scalp. So again, if you're just now joining us, we are at the fair at New Boston in Springfield, Ohio, and we are taking down my um, toilet paper curls uh, in order to get a nice 1790s um, large kind of... Um, Gainsborough type of hair and it's called the hedgehog and um, so for me my hair is uh, about mid back um, right right here I don't know if you can see that um, and it is not the optimal length to have this type of hairdo if you want to get this hairdo and have it to stay really well a bob or a long bob works really well or a layered or layered so um, there's this one painting and I can't recall specifics but it actually shows how the woman has her hair cut. Um, it has various layers, and then it's got the really long layer. Uh, and that would be optimal if you want um, a hedgehog without having to use a lot of hair pieces, because not all hedgehogs were uh, really tall and crazy on top. Um, Most of them are just wide. Right. We're 
we're doing really good here. Like, I know we are taking it down. Like, and if you guys look at this, I mean, this is this is pretty crazy. Look how short or curly her hair has become, and it's very long. <laughs> so this may be something that that you guys want to experiment with these paper. Yeah, and this is what they look like again. Um, you guys can look at them. It's actually a piece of toilet paper that's been rolled up very, very tiny, um, and you use it to use it to get a very small piece of hair. Um, or a small like lock of hair to curl this tightly. Now my hair is very straight. It's actually similar to yours um, Where I can't get it to curl like I can't do anything to get it to curl But this is a tried and true method. You can keep that if you want or I can take it <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you're on the top. I'm on the top. Okay. We're we're getting there. We're almost oh, done And then the fun is gonna begin guys, but we, we just wanted to show you this whole method um just because I, you know, like, it works better, I think, sometimes to see the whole... It does. See the whole um, process. Now, historically, to get your hair in tight curls like this, you could do a papio iron, which is this. So you, um, it's similar to the YouTube tutorials on taking a flat iron and putting a piece of tissue paper in between. So you do a pin curl and then you um, actually flatten, flatten curl it. And then when it comes out, it comes in a similar type of um, curl to this. Uh, so that's one method you can use. Um, the other one is using one of these historical um, and antique curling irons. But you do need a heating element with those because they're not plug in -able. Um And they don't have a heating element inside, which means that you can actually get a much tighter, smaller curl. We have ones that are smaller you, than this. Do you want to tell them about our awesome experience yes. at Jane Austen Festival. <laughs> so at the Jane Austen Festival about a month ago, um, uh, my friend Joanna and I uh, were the hairdressers at the sign of the mortar and the pestle. Uh, so we were here doing um, Regency ball um, in daytime styles, uh, acting as hairdressers, and we were um, using all historical methods. So we were very excited when Alicia had come across these, which are the heating elements to um, get these to actually curl your hair. So you can see here there's a wick and then there's a stand and you light this wick on fire, <laughs> which is kind of scary. And then that flame will actually heat this. And as long as you don't have a lot of wind like we do right now, it works pretty well. Um, there is oil in this and we found out the hard way with wind that if you have it on something wood, that is a bad idea. And we accidentally burnt <laughs> you point to the us. toilet. Can you guys see that? We we burnt our 18, original 1820s toilet that started on fire. I was very sad. Um, <laughs> um, so we ended up actually using Sterno's heaters like you use for buffets. And that's a flameless heat, which is very nice for this type of thing. So in the um, concern of safety, we decided that we were going to use the Sternos heaters rather than the um, right. the antique ones just because we didn't want to have any mishaps. Right. And um, it's easier to control a Sternos heater. The Sternos don't have flames, they're flameless. Right. And so that's that's really what we need out here because we can't control the weather. Um, we can't control like the wind. So right. you just never know. Like these these implements are My really great. Giant. I know. They're really they're really <laughs> great to use indoors. Um, but if you guys are going to use them outside, it's not, it's not going to work very well. Like right now, we couldn't even light one because the flames would be all over. Right. But um, I have a couple questions here. Uh, what happens when you take your curling iron off? Can you just use it, or do you have to? What do you have to do to it? With one of these? Yes. So how Joanna and I, after doing many, many, many people's hair um, and working with our own, we found that if you are able to hold it on your your skin for a second. Um, that means that it's hot enough to heat your hair without burning it. Um, I just saw a video of a girl using one of those curling wands and she burnt her hair off like uh, Joe did in, um, in Little Women and I laughed so hard. But um, we don't want that to happen to you. No. So uh, you do have to make sure that there's no charring because if the, there is charring it will leave a residue on your hair. So somebody who has lighter hair you wouldn't be able to tell on mine because mine is almost black, but you'd be able to tell on both of you because your hair is lighter. Um, so what we did is we just had like one of those flower sack towels and we would like hit it on our hand to make sure it was like the right heat. And when it got to that point, then we would curl it. Um, 
How I like to do it is I would actually um, do it more like the wands that you use today. Uh, you put just a little bit of hair in, pull it down um, to where, I wish we had some hair here, but um, you pull it down to where you have most of the curl just a little bit sticking up and then you you do it like this and hold it yeah. for as long as it takes to get the outside hair hot. Yeah. And then just like these, you have to make sure you wiggle it out because if you pull it, it's gonna make that curl be very long. And if you want to make sure that they stay even better, you can pull it out, keep it in that little tube, and then insert a bobby pin like you do for any sort of barrel curl. Right. And we found that that got the most um, consistent uh, types of curls and um, everyone was happy with them because they were smaller than what you can get with a curl. And, and the, the heat was ridiculous and the humidity was ridiculous and they all stayed very and well. And they all stayed all day long. Even, um, even the ones that got their hair done in the morning, because we used all the historical products, it ended up looking exactly how it was supposed to. Imagine that. And um, also it stayed all day long. Yeah. And Sherry has a question. She wants to know what are the white things you're taking out of your hair? Okay, so these white things are the toilet paper rolls that I was talking about. This is not a historical method. This is yeah, just we'll zoom in. the only way that I can get my hair to curl. And as you can see, it curled very well. Um, so I can unroll one. So it's a quarter piece of a piece of toilet paper. Do you have any toilet paper here? I can show them I how I make do. them. Um, I probably do. Let's, um, let's, I'll, while you start your hair, I'll get, I'll get Okay. That. Um, so what I use these as is a way of getting my hair to wet set. Um, you do have to be careful because they're made of toilet paper that your hair isn't too wet because if it is really wet, this is going to disintegrate in your hand. So it's actually a good indicator of, is my hair too wet to do a wet set with this? Um, cause it'll just fall apart. So, um, so yeah, that's what these are and I've done pink curls and I've done barrel curls and I've done all sorts of like rollers and I cannot get my hair to do any sort of curl unless I do it like this and right now I look like a mop dog. I think it did pretty well. <laughs> so, the, so those so. of you who have a hard time curling, you might want to try this method, mm -hmm. you know, let us know what you think. And, and it's very um, inexpensive, I mean all you have in it is a few squares of toilet paper right. um, and some time. It did take me, because my hair is very thick, two and a half hours to do this and I did not do this section so it would have taken me three hours to do my hair all in these types of curls but I was also using bits of hair that were only this big so if your hair is thinner or finer you can use larger pieces um, also if it's shorter you can use a larger piece and it's not going to hinder the curl so but it's only because my hair is long that I had to do it this way okay so do we want to get started what would be your first so the um, first thing that you do after your hair is this monstrosity um, is we need to put some pomade or so a little bit more powder because uh, I have no powder in my hair just pomade and that's going to liven it up a little bit it's going to um, make it uh, a lot more volumized. Uh, usually it, it actually triples about the size of so I might have a very very large head of hair. And um, um, Elena wants to know how long is your hair when it's uncurled? My hair is uh, is a very straight here so um, it's mid back definitely considered long but not extra long. Um, it's very heavy and it's very slick so I have always had since I was little a really hard time just to get it to hold a wave and um, after, I think it's, 